Kavita Singh, Associate Professor in Department of Civil Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today our topic will be Spectral Reflectance of Vegetation, Soil and Water. In the previous lecture, we have just discussed about the energy interactions with the atmosphere and energy interactions with the earth surface feature. So when the energy interacts with the atmosphere, two things happen, either it absorbs, either it uh, scattering happens. So same thing if the energy interacts with the earth surface feature. So the mechanism like either absorption, reflection or uh, re uh, emitted to the other object. So here when the energy interacts with the atmosphere or earth surface feature, uh, when it interacts with the earth surface feature, we have different kinds of features present in the earth surface feature like uh, vegetation, soil, water. So when it interacts with the vegetation, soil and water, what happens with that kind of uh, objects, features which are present on the earth surface, how they react with the electromagnetic energy. So this we will discuss today. So let us go through this content about this content, what are the contents we are going to discuss in this topic. So we have spectral reflectance curve, we have spectral reflectivity, uh, spectral uh, reflectance curves, spectral reflectance of vegetation, NDVI, spectral reflectance of or soil, spectral reflectance of water. So this is all we are going to discuss because these are all uh, our surface features. So when it falls, when the energy falls on the earth surface feature, how do they react with the kind of the objects which are present on the earth surface. So before we discuss about the uh, soil, water and vegetation, let us discuss about what is a spectral reflectance curve. So a uh, spectral reflectance curve, it is like a curve means, it is a, a graph of reflectance where we have here, we have reflectance reflectance, here we have reflectance percentage and here we have different band regions we have here. So band regions means it starts from the visible to, we have a visible region here, visible region, then we have infrared region, then we have microwave region, then we have radio and television region. Okay. So we have these all regions where we are using these regions for the remote sensing purpose. Below this visible, we have a short wavelength region, short wavelength region where the remote sensing is not at all possible. So that is why when we talk about the reflectance curve, it starts from the visible to the radio to the television region. So if we talk about any kind of uh, features which are present on the earth surface like if we talk about vegetation, so it gives a peak and valley configuration like peak, valley, peak, valley depending on the type of the water, depending on the uh, turbidity of the water or flowing water or clear water, these all different types of water it uh, reflects differently or either it absorbs in different regions based on the uh, organic content or inorganic content present in the water. So here a spectral reflectance curve means it shows a peak valley, peak and valley configuration of the object of the feature which is present on the earth surface. So a spectrum reflectance curve also known as a reflectance spectrum. So represents the amount of light reflected by material across different uh, wavelengths or frequencies and it plots that shows how the reflectance of a material changes with the wavelength of incident light. So uh, next thing we will see about reflectance spectra are essential in various fields such as and it is very much uh, helpful in the various fields such as remote sensing, spectroscopy, material science. So these are the different fields where this uh, spectral reflectance curve is uh, uh, essential or it is very important in these all regions and they provide valuable information about the optical properties of materials including their color, their composition and the surface characteristics of the object. Next, uh, when you talk about this uh, reflectivity, what is reflectivity, spectral reflectivity? So reflectivity is a fraction of incident radiation reflected by a surface. So it is a fraction of incident radiation which is reflected by the surface. The reflectance characteristics of earth surface feature may be quantified by measuring the portion of incident energy that is reflected. 
So this measured is in function of wavelength and is called as spectral reflectance. So reflectivity is basically about the fraction of the incident radiation reflected by the surface. So when the energy falls on the surface, how the it reflects back to the atmosphere and how it is capt captured by the sensor. Now here we have a reflectance curve here, typical spectral reflectance curve of vegetation, soil and water. So in the previous slide, in the first slide, we have just discussed about the reflectance curve. So reflectance curve is, this is, this is the kind of curve it gives when the energy falls on the earth's surface. If suppose here is the sun, when it falls on the earth's surface, it has to pass through the atmosphere and it has to pass through the electromagnetic spectrum. So where, which region it is uh, highly reflected, which region it is absorbed based on the presence of the water content, based on the presence of the organic content in the water, it matters, it depends. So now if we see dry, bare soil, vegetation, water, we have three types of uh, features here. So if you talk about dry, bare soil, dry, bare soil, if it is, so if you see here, this is the dry bare soil. Dry bare soil means it has a very uh, rough, uh, uh, it's like texture of uh, very rough texture because it is totally dry. So if it is a wet soil, the texture will be smooth. So dry bare soil, it has a uh, more, uh, I mean, it's not much, we don't have much peak and valley configuration. It's constantly, it is like uh, increasing in the infrared region. This is the IR region and this is the radio region. So it is keep on increasing. It's not like going up and down. Whereas if you see about vegetation, so vegetation is having more peak and valley configuration. Like when you see the vegetation in this visible region 0 0.4 to 0.7, it is absorbing. So the valley is uh, totally down. It's like a valley. So when suddenly it is going up like a peak here, because in the infrared region, because the presence of the chlorophyll and presence of the water content in the leaves, the highly reflectance it will be in the infrared region of the green band. That's why our uh, eyes can see the vegetation in green in color. And in the satellite image, when it is reflecting in the infrared region, so in the satellite image, the vegetation will be visible in red in color. So suddenly it is moving and again falling down in this uh, infrared region. So this is microwave region again. So microwave region, we have a peak and valley again and slowly it is falling down in the television region or my uh, radio region. Now, uh, if you talk about water, so this water you can see it is totally absorbed, the energy is totally absorbed based on the presence of the water, uh, suspended solid or if the water is clear, it may reflect. But if the water is having more organic matter, it may absorb the energy, it will not reflect much. Now, if we talk about this uh, typical spectral reflectance curve for vegetation, this is only for the vegetation. So, it is about uh, like uh, if we see 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 region, this is the visible region. In this region, you see chlorophyll absorption is more. So, due to presence of chlorophyll, here the uh, valley is more like it is absorbing more and suddenly it is having a peak configuration due to spongy mesoblade spongy mesophyll it is totally reflecting now if we talk, if you go to this infrared region or we call it a short wavelength region of the long uh, wavelength radiation uh, we can see here due to presence of uh, moisture content in the vegetation water absorption it will be there water absorption means in the leaves the more water content will be present then it will absorb in these regions this is how the peak and valley configuration it will give based on the presence of the water content in the leaves. So by seeing this peak and valley configuration, by seeing the spectral reflectance curve, we can just identify that which type of vegetation it is present on the surface. Now we have spectral reflectance of vegetation. So in the range from about 0 0.7 to 1.3 nanometer, a plant leaf typically reflects. Why it reflects? Because 40 to 50 percent of the energy uh, of the energy incident upon it primarily due to the internal structure of plant leaves. Because the internal structure of the leaves are highly variable between plant species, reflectance measurements in this range often permit us to discriminate between uh, species and even they look the same in the visible 
wavelengths like uh, this internal structure of the leaves are uh, highly variable because between the species reflectance measurements in the range and it often permits us to discriminate the between the species so that's this is how we can just discriminate about the species based on the uh, structure of the leaves and uh, highly uh, water content. So many plant stresses alter the reflectance in this region and sensors operating in this range are often used for the vegetation uh, or stress de detection. Now uh, when you go check this image like it is about the different types of vegetation here. So what are the different types of vegetation we come across and we see on the earth surface feature? So, uh, how it appears in the satellite image and how original it, it appears on the ground. So, when we uh, see here, we have uh, three types of vegetation here. We have corn, soya beans, rice. So, this three vegetation, uh, when we see a satellite image, it appears like this. So, where corn appears in this dark red color and soya bean appears little lighter red color and rice appears in darker maroon red color. Okay, so these three types of vegetation based on the type of the leaf and the structure of the leaf or water content in the leaf, the appearance in the image will differ. It will differentiate the uh, crop or differentiate the vegetation uh, in the satellite image. So these are taken on the different dates again. So we have Jan 1, Feb 3, March 7, March 14. So we have different dates here. So in Jan 1, it looks like this. Jan Feb 3, it looks like this. In March 7. So when you see March 7, means uh, gradually it is like uh, ripening up. So after ripening up, what is the condition of the field? And when we see the satellite image based on the reflectance curve and based on the uh, spectral property of the object, we can see this color in the satellite image. Like if you talk about uh, corn, so it looks in light green color, right? Uh, then if you talk about this uh, soya bean, looks like a white color because it is totally ripened now. Uh, now if you see this rice, it is totally red in color. Later, when you go to uh, more March 14 after more seven days, we see here the corn situation is totally white in color. Means totally it is uh, now it is uh, ready to harvest. Totally the water content is moisture content is dried up and it is uh, very dry in the uh, fields. That's why it appears white in color. Now here it is on the harvesting stage again. So I mean, that's why it is appearing brown in color. Now rice will, because it has more water content present in that, that's the reason it appears red in color here. So these three different types of crop and differently it appears in the satellite image. This way we can differentiate the types of the crop. Crop estimation, even yield estimation we can do based on this uh, reflectance curves. So reflectance of vegetation again beyond 1.3 uh, nanometer. Energy incident upon vegetation is essentially absorbed or reflected with little to no transmittance of the energy. Now dips in the reflectance occur at 1.4 and 1.9 and 2.7 nanometer because water in the leaf absorbs strongly at these wavelengths. So the dips we can see the reason behind here is uh, dips means uh, valley. Uh, we can valley valley we can see more here that means so i uh, 1.4 and 1.9 and 2.7 nanometer because water in the leaf absorbs strongly at the these wavelengths and uh, water absorption bands so reflecting peaks occur at about 1.6 nanometer to 2.2 nanometer so peak we can see where we can see the peak in the 1.6 and 1 2.2 nanometers between the absorption bands so throughout the range beyond 1.3 nanometer, leaf reflectance is approximately inversely related to the total water present in a leaf, which is a function of both moisture content and the thickness of the leaf. Now, uh, you, this is one example of the reflectance in the satellite image. How it appears in the satellite image, you have uh, three different images here. So in this image, this is how it looks like uh, when you see here, we have a uh, red color means high vegetation, yellow color means low vegetation. So uh, when you see these are three different years, 
it has a three different ears uh, because you, how we can identify is in for picture number one you can see very less vegetation is present picture number two somewhat more picture number three we have more vegetation present over here so uh, different the ears it is taken now uh, this these are all true colors how exactly our eyes can see now uh, actually on the ground but when you talk about satellite image when you see the image satellite image the vegetation appearance in the satellite image will be red in color so wherever you see this red in color it is all vegetation because the highest peak uh, configuration what we can see in the infrared region that's the region that's the reason the vegetation will appear red in color in the satellite image so these are all satellite image colors and these are true color images now yellow color here is low vegetation so wherever you, you find this low uh, yellow color it is all this all are having less vegetation when you compare to these images we can just identify few of the areas are covered with less vegetation that's the reason it is showing in the yellow color so this is how we can just compare the ear-wise images based on the satellite image. Now NDVI uh, vegetation is very much helpful in the NDVI. NDVI, what is NDVI? NDVI stands for the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. So it's a numerical indicator that uses satellite imagery to assess the health and density of the vegetation and it can just find out the health of the vegetation and density like right? even yield estimation we can just find out with the help of the NDVI in a particular area. So NDVI is calculated using reflectance of visible and near infrared light, uh, light and the formula for the NDVI is NDVI is equal to NIR minus red, NIR plus red, NDVI is equal to NIR plus red or NIR minus red. So this is a formula we use for the NDVI for the health and density of the vegetation in the satellite image. Through satellite image itself uh, with the help of NDVI we can just find out the health of the vegetation present on the particular ground. So where NIR is the near infrared reflectance, where red is the red reflectance, the value of NDVI typically range from minus 1 to 1. Where higher values indicate denser and heavier vegetation, hence uh, here's what the values gradually mean. Uh, now we have uh, values close to one dense vegetation. So if it is close to one, it is dense vegetation, and if it is around zero, we have little to no vegetation. Values below zero, usually water bodies or other non-vegetated surfaces. So NDVI is widely used in agriculture, forestry, environmental monitoring and other fields to assess vegetation health, monitor changes in land cover and study climate change impacts in the ecosystem. So this is very much helpful in the monitoring of the um, environmental issues and even in agriculture, in the forestry, the land use land cover changes, we can just use NDVI for these purposes. Now here we have NDVI infrared satellite images. So this is an infrared satellite image. This is an infrared satellite image where it shows you the high photosynthesis areas and low photosynthesis area. So high photosynthesis area, we can just see this purple color and this dark blue color. It has a high photosynthesis area, whereas in the uh, rest of the areas where you can see uh, low photosynthesis area, the red all color is, uh, is like low photosynthesis area. So through the help of the intra infrared uh, satellite images, we can just find out about the health of the vegetation and photosynthesis process where it is happening more and where it is happening low. So based on that, the further steps can be taken for the improvement of the vegetation. Now coming to the soil, spectral reflectance of uh, soil. Uh, the factors that influence soil reflectance act over less specified spectral bands. Uh, factors affecting soil reflectance are moisture content. It has a moisture content. Um, how the soil is uh, affecting, how the soil reflectance is affecting. So that is all based on the moisture content, soil texture. So what is moisture content? So when a soil is a wet soil, when it has a more water content present in the soil, that means it is having more moisture present in the soil. That's how it is having more moisture content. So when it is having more moisture content, the absorbance will be more. The reflectance will be less of the radiation. 
Now, a soil texture, the soil texture and uh, proportion of the sand, silt, and clay texture means are the roughness and the smoothness of the soil also depends the reflectance and the absorbance of the soil. So, surface roughness, presence of iron oxides, and the organic matter content also depends. These are all factors which depends the reflectance of the soil. So, the presence of moisture in the soil will decrease its reflectance. This effect is greatest in the water absorption bands and about 1.4 to 1.9, 2.2 to 2.7 nanometers the water absorption bands we can list. Uh, it has a greatest effect in these regions. So, soil moisture content is strongly related to the soil texture. So, soil moisture content is related to the soil texture. How we can just make the statement true? Like a uh, soil moisture if it is having it will be having more water content. If it is having more water content, the texture of the soil will become smooth. So, as the soil gets dried up, uh, if it, it is getting more dried up, then the texture of the soil will become little rough. So, the, if the texture of the soil is uh, rough, then the reflectance will be more. So, if the texture of the soil is smooth, the reflectance will be less, the, water, the energy absorption will be more in this region. Now, we have spectral reflectance curves here. Uh, differently, we are showing with the examples like we have again clear lake water, turbid river water, wet soil, dry soil, vegetation. So, we have uh, different types of features here again. So, if you see about this clear water, clear water is this is falling down, the valley is falling down, means it has uh, absorption in the infrared region, whereas in the visible region, little bit it is having more. Uh, and when you so see about the turbid water, the absorption is again more in the infrared region. Now, if you see the vegetation, it is highly reflecting in the infrared region and drastically it is falling down in the microwave region, again going up, again going down. So, it is very much up and down uh, based on the presence of the water content, moisture content. Now, if you see the dry soil, dry soil means totally it is reflecting in a constant manner. So, because it is not having any kind of moisture present in that, so it just gives reflectance. There is no absorbance present in that. So, variation in the spectral reflectance, we have a different variation here. Sandy loamy, fine sandy loamy and very fine loamy soil, uh, different uh, curves we can see here. So, it is not uh, having uh, much more difference between each other. Mostly, it is having same types of reflectance all the three soils. Now coming to the spectral reflectance of the water. Uh, so water is like, uh, it's like uh, not moving water or clear water or turbid water. So these all types of water, it has different reflectance, absorbance, present of uh, content like organic content present in that matter. So it all depends on the type of the water, the reflectance will be there. So, water in soil vegetation or water bodies absorbs radiations at the near infrared wavelength and beyond strong absorption bands at about, at about 1.4, 1.9 and 2.7 nanometer. So, reflectance from a water body can stem from, from an interaction with the water surface, specular reflection and with material suspended in the water and with the bottom of the water body. So, clear water absorbs, uh, when you talk about a water, clear water absorbs relatively little energy. So, wherever you find the clear water, the absorption of the energy will be less, the reflection will be more. So, uh, less little energy with wavelengths of zero, less than 0 0.6 nanometer, uh, resulting in high transmittance in the blue-green portion of the spectrum. As, a turbi as the turbidity of the water changes, the reflectance Reflectance changes dramatically. So, turbid water, uh, if it is there, means the reflectance will be changed again, the more absorption will be more over here, and the reflectance changes dramatically. Uh, now, increasing in chloro chlorophyll concentration tend to decrease reflectance in blue wavelengths and increase it in green wavelengths can monitor the algae. So, if you want to monitor the algae, we can just go with this chlorophyll concentration. And decrease of reflectance in the blue wavelengths means increase of 
green wavelengths uh, which can monitor the eye. Now we have we have here variation in the spectral reflectance of water. Uh, so total solids, if it is present, if 200 mg per liter, so the reflectance here you can see in the infrared region is more, but absorbance is more in the uh, microwave region and visible region. So, uh, this is like 100 mg per liter, if it is 100 mg per liter, then it is more absorbing, 50 mg per liter, again it is absorbing, 25 mg per liter, again it is absorbing more. Now, uh, we have uh, uh, spectral reflectance of turbid water, turbid water means, what is a turbid water? Turbid water, the water which is having more organic content present in that and which looks totally muddy totally muddy, totally turbid, there is no clearance of water, we cannot see through it. So that kind of water is called as turbid water. So if you see the turbid water, it is having more uh, organic matter present here. So it is totally absorbing in all the region, regions. It is not at all reflecting because it has a very much organic content present which absorbs the energy. It is not like reflecting the energy. So if you see the clear water, it is somewhat reflecting in this region. Bare soil means totally reflectance will be there. Okay. Uh, now spectral reflectance of turbid water can vary significantly depending on the several factors such as the concentration and composition of suspended particles, dissolved organic matter and phytoplankton. So spectral reflectance refers to the proportion of light reflected by a surface at different wavelengths and within the electromagnetic spectrum and in turbid water suspended particles scatter and absorb light influencing the water reflectance characteristics. So what happens spectral reflectance of turbid water can vary significantly and that depends on different factors like uh, concentration of and composition of the suspended particles, uh, dissolved organic matters, or some phytoplankton. Phytoplankton means we, uh, we have this different kinds of uh, plants which are grown on the surface of the water. This also depends the reflectance of the water body. So when the plants are grown on the surface of the water, so what happens basically, uh, the reflectance of the water will not be there. It shows as a vegetation in the satellite image and uh, it shows totally red in color. So reflectance will be differently how the vegetation reflects. Same the way the uh, water will be reflected wherever the phytoplankton are present because presence of phytoplankton it has a greenery over the surface of the water. So based on the greenery the reflectance will uh, change. So spectral reflectance refers to the proportion of light reflected by a surface or different wavelengths. Okay, in turbid water, suspended particles scatter and uh, absorb light and influencing the water reflectance characteristics. Now, uh, typically, turbid water exhibits high reflectance. It exhibits the high reflectance in the visible wavelength due to scattering of light by suspended particles. However, the exact spectral signature can be quite complex and many more, uh, many vary depending on the factors such as particle size, distribution, concentration, water chemistry. So spectral signature can be vary depending on the factors of the particle size distribution of uh, present in the water body or concentration of uh, different types of organic matter. Uh, that all depends, The fact these are all factors which depends the uh, spectral signature, it varies the spectral signature. And uh, researchers and scientists are often, uh, they use remote sensing techniques to study the uh, reflectance uh, of the turbid water bodies, which can provide, uh, which can provide valuable insight uh, into the water quality and sediment transport. So uh, I hope you understood about this uh, topic about the spectral reflectance of vegetation, soil. Water. So these are the three main features which are present on the earth's surface and based on the reflectance curve we are able to identify the type of the vegetation, we are able to identify the type of the soil and we are able to identify the moisture content in the soil present. Either it is a dry soil, either it is a uh, wet soil or it is have, if the texture of the soil is smooth, if the texture of the soil is rough, 
Based on these all types of factors, we are able to identify the features which are present on the earth surface based on the reflectance curve without going to that place. And water it has, if, it, if the water is having very much turbid uh, water, so it absorbs the water wherever the absorbance is. If we see the reflectance curve of the water body, if we see the absorbance is more, that means the turbid water is present. That means the water is not good for health, it is not good for the utilization. The water quality is not good for uh, drinking also. So that all water is based on the turbidity the we can just based on the reflectance curve we can just uh, identify and we can just uh, come to a conclusion that this area is having uh, more water problem so in uh, in the re regions where the reflectance of the, the reflectance curve of the water is very high i mean it's not absorbing more that means we can come to a conclusion that this area is having uh, good water quality it is having clear water so this is how we can just go to the conclusion based on the reflectance curves of different types of uh, features which are present on the earth surface. So uh, we have a few of the references where which we can refer and we can just go through and just we can find out more content. Like we have a book called as Dr. M. Anjiradi. So this book is about the remote sensing and GIS which is from BS Publications, New Delhi. And it is very good book for the remote sensing uh, and GIS. So most of the part, if you uh, can just refer for remote sensing purpose, you can get a very get a clear picture about the spectral reflectance curves. And fundamental of remote sensing by George Joseph, uh, UST Press, Hyderabad. Uh, this is also a good book for the remote sensing. And we finally we have a link of uh, NP NPTEL link here, uh, which you can just go through the. Uh, link and find out more content about this um, reflectance curve and uh, few more uh, references you can just go through like S. Kumar Basics of Remote Sensing and GIS from Lakshmi Publications and Tang Chan. Tang Chan is the book for the uh, GIS when you uh, when you study about GIS when we talk about GIS this is a very important and very good book uh, for students to just go through it to get to know about the GIS process. So presently we are just learning about the remote sensing. So you can just go through this uh, three, four books for the more content and find out about this remote sensing process. So we have one more book here called as Remote Sensing in GIS by Bhatia. So this book also you can just refer and uh, go through the find out the more content about this. So that's all for today. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.